The Singapore Grand Prix lacked the high-octane excitement seen at other races recently, but it's not exactly a circuit known for its wheel-to-wheel -wheel overtaking opportunities. The real surprise came when we hit the checkered flag with no safety cars for the first time in the circuit's history, something that some teams were clearly banking on with their strategies. The drivers at these teams were left hanging, getting more and more frustrated as the race went on, and it led to some pretty fiery interactions over the radio. Frustrations haven't necessarily been limited to these races, however, as both Ferrari and Mercedes have had absolutely roller coaster seasons where they have experienced the highest highs and the lowest lows, with Singapore landing somewhere in between, possibly making it one of the more frustrating races to date given the wider context of the season. Both teams are ruining what could have been, but are the drivers at the end of their tether because of the challenging conditions at Singapore, or are the season long tribulations experienced by Ferrari and Mercedes starting to take a toll on their drivers? Want to know why Mercedes are in hot water? Hamilton in particular is furious, but could the team have done anything different? And stick around because it's red hot at Ferrari at the moment, with the Scuderia being brought back down to earth following a good couple of races. So, let's get a bit of context by recapping the events of the Singapore Grand Prix, shall we? Norris managed to break his habit of wasting pole positions by starting poorly, with the British driver staying ahead into Turn 1 and never looking back. We haven't seen a dominant drive like that outside of a Red Bull livery for quite some time, though Norris did have heart-in-mouth moments along the way, which could have seen his McLaren in the wall on more than one occasion. Despite some close calls with the walls, Norris sailed to a P1 which was only dampened by Daniel Ricciardo playing the sacrificial lamb in what may be his last race to take the fastest lap off of the unstoppable Norris. Verstappen drove a very tidy race, especially given that Singapore has historically been a bogey race for the Milton Keynes team, though that may well have been made more straightforward by factors we'll be discussing in a bit. Piastri brought his car home in third after going incredibly long on his first stint, with Russell, Leclerc, Hamilton and Sainz lagging behind. Hülkenberg and Alonso being in the points yet again made for an impressive race, but the driver who has really impressed us yet again was Franco Colapinto, who was unlucky not to be sat in Sergio Perez's P10, following Lando Norris ruining the Argentine's pace with a sloppy pass under blue flags. If Audi weren't such cowards, we would expect him to have earned a place on the grid next year, but sadly we can't see that happening. For the time being, he is definitely a driver for the future, and we look forward to seeing him in the remaining races, especially on tracks like Brazil, where we think the young Argentine is due for a very special race. So, let's talk about Mercedes. The Mercedes drivers only finished two places apart, however it really was a tale of two races. The aforementioned gamble for a safety car seemed to cripple the potential that the drivers had from the start, and the frustration started early, especially for George Russell. Russell started in P4 just behind Hamilton, who started on a used set of soft tyres, and the man who will take on the mantle of the Mercedes number no. 1 next year was from the very first lap held up by his teammate, who was having to nurse his soft tyres to last into a stint that was getting further and further away from being beneficial. The hopes for Mercedes were clear, survive the early laps and hope for an early safety car, and to be fair you can't exactly blame them all that much. There hasn't been a race at Singapore that hasn't seen a safety car by around half distance, and the two cars ahead of them have been out of their reach for most of the season. George Russell, however, seemed to believe that at least one of the cars ahead, namely Max Verstappen, was entirely catchable, with him airing out his frustrations on the radio early into the race, as he said. Lewis needs to pick up the pace, the front two are getting away. And so they did. Hamilton ended up being 5 seconds off the lead by the start of lap 5, with George being held back to the point where he lost the advantage he may have had on fresher tyres by the time that Hamilton was brought into the pit on lap 17. Now bear in mind, track position on a track like Singapore is all important given how hard it is to overtake, so any kind of early race advantage that could have been had was lost. Starting P4 and finishing P4 on the face of it isn't the worst thing in the world, however for George, the early stint could have offered a hell of a lot more than what he got, and he may well see the Singapore Grand Prix as a podium that got away. However, George wasn't the only Mercedes driver left frustrated by Lewis's strategy, as the seven-time world champion was furious in regards to Mercedes' baffling strategy calls that left him finishing behind his teammate, despite an impressive qualifying the day before that should have put him on a preferential strategy. Hamilton's lap 17 pit stop onto the hards was a tough pill to swallow for the British driver, as he not only had to nurse less effective tyres to the hards at a time where some medium starters were pitting anyway, but even following the stop, he was in 
a world of pain as he felt the tire offset cost him later on in the race, disadvantaging him and later on gifting P5 to Leclerc who started down in P9, six places lower than the soft starting Hamilton. Hamilton made his thoughts clear about his strategy of the radio as he said, you're killing me with this offset, mate. Something is definitely wrong with the car, mate. Tires are dropping off. And following the race, Lewis would likely have slammed the team strategy decisions. In all fairness, George likely would have too, as both the drivers were screwed over. But Lewis should never have been put on the softs, and his dismal strategy cost him more than George positionally. Both drivers would likely have slammed the team, the key word being would, as neither driver made an appearance in the media pen following the race. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to adorn my tinfoil hat like Lewis stands on Twitter and make claims of the team doing anything stupid like sabotaging their drivers intentionally out of spite for leaving the team. However, the fact that neither driver made an appearance in the media pen stinks, especially when you hear the team's reasoning. Unfortunately, neither George or Lewis will be attending the media pen this evening as they recover from the exertions from this evening's race. So don't get me wrong, Singapore is no joke. It's the hardest race on the calendar and anyone that has stepped foot outside of the airport will let you know that you almost need gills to survive the humid climate. However, neither driver has missed a media duty in Singapore before, and both of them have been through far harder, higher pressure races. George appeared after that stunning 2023 last lap crash, and Lewis would turn up after every close call race with Vettel and Verstappen, with the seven-time world champion not missing media duties in any of the previous 14 races at the Singapore Grand Prix. So you're meaning to tell me that the one time that both drivers have just so happened to be so exhausted to the point of not partaking in media duties is the year where Mercedes completely let both of their drivers down with terrible strategy calls. It's not even like the Brackley team had the gall to prioritize Russell in the race as they left him out to rot behind Lewis regardless. Planning for a safety car is what you expect from cars starting outside the points like Kevin Magnussen, not from the car starting in P3. However, regardless of why they aren't attending, whether it be down to borderline heatstroke or the team wanting to save face, it's safe to assume that the drivers would have little, if anything, good to say at all. Likely, you would have heard reaction by now, but at the time of making this, it all seems a little bit weird. Unlike the Mercedes drivers, the Ferrari drivers had a chance to speak following the race, and the overwhelming feeling in the Scuderia camp is one of complete deflation. Given their recent success at Baku and Monza, as well as their mold-breaking win last year and history of success at Singapore, Ferrari were expecting a strong weekend at the last race pre-summer break part 2. However, the weekend quickly became one about damage limitation, a dismal Saturday which saw one Ferrari in the wall and the other one with a second row lap deleted left the Ferraris with an uphill battle, one made worse by Carlos Sainz plummeting on the opening lap. While both Ferraris had to struggle their way through an already tough race, they managed to climb to P5 and P7, but Charles Leclerc was clearly frustrated through the race and quite dejected following it, as Ferrari crashed back down from their top two status that only lasted a few rounds. While Leclerc made sure to emphasize the team's well-executed race, his overriding feeling was that there was nothing more that could have been done, both due to a dismal Saturday as well as them simply being the third best car on the grid. Realistically, Ferrari still have a good chance of finishing second this season in the constructors, however that will be more down to the shortcomings of Red Bull's second driver than it would be on the merit of their car.